Hi everyone, it's SGP Forester TV here. Today we're at Mount Yahiko in Niigata Prefecture. I'm planning to drive down Mount Yahiko in my Forester STI Sport. Please watch along. Now, we'll be descending in this Forester STI Sport. We'll be going down the Yahiko skyline, so please stay tuned. Regarding the descent, this Forester STI Sport is equipped with three STI flexible parts. In terms of performance, I think it's quite impressive. Even stock, the Forester has high potential, but with three STI flexible parts, it achieves even higher performance. I'm in I mode now, but I'll switch to S mode for engine braking. The Yahiko skyline has some gaps in the road, but this Forester STI Sport handles those gaps smoothly. When hitting gaps, cars tend to become unstable, but it's stable as is. And with STI flexible parts, it feels like it's glued to the road surface. So when you're going downhill at a decent speed and hit a gap, you'd think the car would shake, but it feels firmly planted on the road. In places like this, the stability is noticeably high. The Forester STI Sport has Astomo variable dampers in front and STI tuning dampers in the rear, so the car's stability is quite good, and it feels even more enhanced. That's the impression I get. From the moment you turn the steering wheel, the car responds firmly. The car reacts, but it's not uncomfortable at all. It feels natural, as if the car is naturally changing direction, you know. So when you add the suspension parts, it's like... Some might find the car too sensitive to steering input, but that's not the case with STI's flexible parts. It doesn't feel uncomfortable at all. If you've installed STI parts because of my channel, you'll understand when you try them. It's truly an SUV that can drive like a sports car. That's the Forester. Even on undulating or bumpy roads, it handles well, sticking to the surface with high stability. The road surface is quite bad here, isn't it? Down on the Yahiko skyline, it's like this. The upper part flows better and feels nicer, doesn't it? The road is really bad, like this, but really though, the car's stability is incredibly high. However, by the way, I've loaded a large Thula Motion XTL roof box. It's comfortable with no weird vibrations, and it feels good to wind through the roads. See, even gaps like this are fine. If I were driving without the roof box, the Forester SDI Sport would be incredibly nimble. I usually keep the roof box on as standard, but occasionally I drive without it, and it's surprisingly light and quick. The Forester STI Sport handles so well, it's truly impressive. Though I thought we might see the sea. It's not visible. We can't see it, can we? We might have caught a glimpse of it here. So. We've come down the Yahiko skyline and entered the seaside line. How was the drive down? As expected, wow, it's got incredible potential. It leaves quite an impression as a high performance car. On my channel, there are many STI flexible parts videos, so please check them out if you're interested. The results show it was indeed good. There's a lot to consider, so I hope this is helpful. But you know, the Forester is great even in its basic form. Without STI parts, its performance is still incredibly high. When driving on winding roads, it feels really good. Especially the STI Sport version. It's seriously amazing, truly exceptional. The SK model lineup has expanded with special editions. The Forester SK now has a rich variety. When considering a purchase, you'll likely find a grade that suits you best. If you're not set on the new model, I'd personally recommend the SK Forester. 
So this time I drove the Forester STI Sport in Niigata at Mount Yahiko. Let's meet again in the next video.